up keeping up to date with everything and, yeah. and everyone. And, and, you know, you have all these companies throwing all this money, um, at YouTubers to talk highly of their product to get people to buy that thing. Yeah. And it's just this vicious cycle of like pe- companies paying people on the internet to say good things about their product to get people to buy it. It's Tom. It's Jake. You, you already, already know. It's pretty spot on. All right, ready? All right, we are back for another quick take. Yeah. <laughs> what are we doing today, man? Um, I think today we're going to talk about gear culture hmm. and just talk about because I made a post on my Instagram and I basically said, stop spending. Yeah, I'm just going to read it. Stop spending money on the latest and newest gear. Gear is no substitution or solution for creativity or lack thereof. I launched my entire career on a Canon T2i and was landing clients and jobs through the creative music videos and stories I was telling with the camera, not because I had the latest, fanciest, most badass piece of tech camera. And like it was getting like a ton of interaction. People were, you know, asking questions, making their own comments, battling out with each other. And I think we see it so much now just on YouTube with like all the YouTubers like gear reviews. And when a new piece of gear drops, everyone fawns over it. And it's like, oh, we need that. I need that camera. Yo, do you have the A7S? Like even our friend with the R5, Travis, like mm-hmm. just like had, as soon as it came out, had to get the R5, but he had the black magic already. And it's like, why do you need that? Yeah. Like always that idea of like, you need the latest best piece of tech to like make good videos or to yeah to be somebody or to like make like i or to land that next job and yeah. i don't know i think it's something that no i think it's like have a a, a conversation about it because i definitely yeah. i agree and i can see kind of both sides of the fence because i own a lot of equipment and yeah. i'd love to maybe like speak on like why i own certain things and maybe you know i i think we have an episode slated where we're actually gonna talk about the gear we bought that we completely regret by right, right. and i don't know if you want to touch on some of that um, yeah i mean i think that could fit into this because i mean shoot it could we could kick it off right now with yeah my whole story of even i think it was five years ago when i feel like i kind of fell into that gear trap a little bit you know when i was i think i was 25 26 and the cannons you know see 100 200 300 line of cameras was like yeah, coming yeah. out and and the the canon c200 mark three i think was the camera and it came out and it was like fifteen thousand. and right at the time like there was all these people talking about you know the c c100 lines and of the canon cameras and and i was like oh man i really want this camera and it was like a little bit cheaper than a red um and i was like I was just kind of fawning over that camera and then an opportunity came up where it was like, Hey, we're going to shoot this independent feature. We want you to shoot it. And I was like, Oh, I need that camera. If I'm going to shoot this feature, like I felt like I needed it and I bought it and it was by far the worst regrettable purchase I've ever made in my filmmaking career. Just use it really. I barely used it. It didn't, Mm. I didn't fully even really like the look of it over the stuff I was already using. Well, because we were already shooting together. So mm -hmm. it was like when I pulled up on set and I, I think at the time had my red scarlet or maybe it just upgraded my red epic i think you upgraded i mean so it's like if we were shooting so much together probably that camera never really came out of the bag right yeah and so it just i i shot a couple music videos and things with it i did a little documentary film for my brother and um and everything on it and i ended up just selling it i think like a, a year later but it was just it was just a dumb purchase but it was me getting caught up in like oh i need this camera to to do this thing and it's just like i didn't you know what i mean what ends up happening more often than not is when you you know something excites us right a piece of camera something shiny right we're always drawn to shiny objects is you start to kind of i think i'm guilty of it so i don't know if this is relatable to anyone listening or watching but i'm sure you watch some like test footage right or review and you're like oh my god this is so insane and you kind of get like tunnel vision where you kind of start to ignore the red flags or the things that are like maybe this is a bad idea or maybe I don't, you know, you start to only focus on the things that you think are great about it and you almost justify purchasing it. Um, Case in point for me, I bought, uh, I think a lot of people have probably bought GoPros, right? Yeah. I'd had one years ago. 
And I think the eight or nine, or maybe it's a 10, I don't know what the current one is, but I saw, you know, a YouTuber review it and they talked about all the cool things it does. I'm like, oh, I could use this for like steady cam behind the scenes and I can mount it. And I, I've done that a handful of times and it definitely worked, but I can't tell you the last time I used it yeah. or it came out of the bag. It's like, but that video hooked me, right? It made right. me think I needed, needed it, you it. know? So Yeah, I mean, I probably have countless GoPros sitting in a drawer at home somewhere. You comment know what I mean? below so. how many GoPros you guys have. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a good one. Yeah, comment below how many GoPros you have sitting in a drawer somewhere that the are thing, being used. A, we'll, we'll get off the Go... Sorry, GoPro. But I, <laughs> there's so many accessories from each line. So oh, yeah. Seven has its own accessories. Have so I have like a, a drawer of full of all the different water mounts and stuff. But no, that happens though. And then you end up with all this auxiliary stuff from any yeah. purchase, you know? Yeah. So. I think, I think the overarching kind of theme that I just want to chat about and talk on yeah. is just like, does gear matter? And like at, at what point and, you know, for me coming up, I had the T2i and the T2i was a cheap entry level camera. It was the camera that I could afford. It shot 1080. It was like the new DS, like small entry camera DSLR for people. But like there was certainly a 7D, a 5D Mark II, um, you know, obviously like bigger cinema cameras and things like, but as a little broke college kid, I could only afford the T2i. I bought a T2i, but like that T2i launched my career. And that was kind of the point of my post is like, yo, that's like how I got the videos with Futuristic, Kyle, DY, launch, you know, had my YouTube yeah. channel, built a massive following with a camera that was, I don't know, 600 bucks. Like yeah. I, I forget what it was I think at it only the time. Did like 1080 like, or something Only too. 1080. There was no, yeah, there was no 4K, this slow and that, yeah. all that slow-mo. Like, and so I was getting all these jobs and opportunities off of the creativity and the cool videos and shots and just things I was doing with the camera, not because I had like the sickest camera. Yeah. And I think people get so caught up in like the new Sony a seven S three dropped. Oh, I need that one. I need to upgrade from my two. Well, I think here's my perspective on it. And maybe this is, like I said, there's definitely a disclaimer of like, this is Tom's perspective, but I think that's, what's kind of cool about having a chat like this is Filmmaking is not linear. Like you look at almost any other profession in the world, right? You want to become a lawyer. Lawyer To become a lawyer is very linear. You go to law school, you pass the bar, now you're a lawyer. It's A, B, C. Yeah. And filmmaking is not like that. You could become a wedding videographer that turns into a music video director who becomes the next Steven Spielberg. Like that right, right, is right. not re recreatable. Like everyone's journey is different, but I think people see... They want to make it linear. They're in their heads. They're like, okay, if I buy this camera, I'm going to get this job. I'm going to land this client. I'm going to make money. And they like, like to draw a little connect the dot system. Yeah. And more often than not, that camera fills usually point A or point B because it's like, oh, if I could just save up and get this camera, they think that's the way to start this sort of linear journey to get where they want to go. Right. And I really think that is the wrong school of thought because I've had people reach out because we, you know, we we have Reds, mind you, it worked for us. So we, we right. bought into the cameras because I don't want people to be like, oh, you guys are saying don't buy all this gear and you guys have the nicest cameras. Mind you, it worked for us on our sort of DP grind. I mean, we've talked about how many videos we shot. We just leveled up and bought those cameras. But like right. not everyone listening to this is in that situation or needs those cameras. Well, well you know? case in point, we have the Reds, but both of our cameras now, mine at least is four or five years old now. Yeah, And they just came over the course of time. They've come out with newer models, the Monstro, the the new Raptor. Helium. Or I think um, you have the Helium, right? I have the Helium, the yeah. new Raptor. And never once did it, I was like, oh, I'm I'm getting the Raptor. I'm upgrading. Like yeah. I, there's just, there's so many, so many better ways to spend your money than just buying that latest piece of tech. And it's usually the first generation of a new piece of tech always has oh, issues, bugs, yeah. bugs or it. All, all of a sudden just improves drastically on when they've fixed a few things six months down the road. And now that like slightly newer version of that same camera is out and it's yeah. better than the people that got the first versions and, you know, same thing with like phones and everything. And so like, yeah, we have a red, but I've had that same red for no, four or five years and never was like, yo, I'm going to, I need the new one. I we need were to literally upgrade. on set like, shooting a commercial that you were in and the AC of all crew positions to like kind yeah, of boast that this they is a bought good story. the red Raptor. We're wrapping out our reds. He's like, oh yes. You know, I, did you guys hear about the red Raptor? Mind you, like it just been announced maybe like the day yeah. prior we saw the, the specs and stuff. I was like, oh yeah, I look cool. You know, whatever. He's like, yeah, I bought one. Right. 
what? I mean, like the focus. This is this the, is focus, the AC yeah. of the video. He's like, like, yeah, I have a Gemini, I have a Komodo, and I spot the Red Raptor. And I was like, whoa. I mean, it's like that in that sentence alone, that's like sixty five thousand dollars worth yeah. of cameras. Like, but like, I mean, I get it. Maybe you're a po- like that's why it's so circumstantial. And that's why I think this is a cool combo because, like I said how filmmaking is not linear. Anything I say right now applies to some people and doesn't apply to others. Because right, you might right. be a production company, like we worked with uh, right. WPSN, and they have like 10 reds, but it makes sense because they shoot shows and stuff. So right. having that gear makes sense. So like nothing I say here is gospel, but I think from my perspective, right. I've had people reach out like, hey, like I've been following your journey. It's awesome. And they like think if they buy a red, they, they can do something very similar like and i feel kind of bad because some people are like hey should i take out a loan and buy this camera and it's like if you're in a situation where you have to like financially take out a loan like that's that's crazy like yeah. i would never want anyone listening or watching thinking they need to like put themselves in a financial burden to like chase i people, mean people crazy. do it all the time yeah but every everything i've bought and i always this is kind of like a motto i live by is everything that i buy outside of a house I buy with cash, like, or not with cash, but with cash, like I need to have the funds to buy it. So like when I bought my helium setup, which was like the brain, the thing, everything, I think the total receipt came out to like 43,000, whatever. Like I had $43,000 to buy that camera. I didn't but take out a loan. devil's or, advocate, like someone listening might be like, oh, well, I mean, who has that money laying around? And mind you, you, ha- you were already kind of pretty well off with some of your business ventures. Right. So I can see where someone's listening or watching me like, well... I'm not in that situation and I want that camera. Like, but I think to your point, I would say, I mean, you, I guess could finance it, but it's just like, God, that is so risky to like, that's the price of a car and like a car that camera day after day is not going to really be bringing you much sure rentals here and there. But like, I mean, dude, yeah, every day it's like, it's case in point, especially with reds, their ecosystem, they like will cannibalize it to the point they're better now. I remember, bro, right when I bought my Epic, I think I bought it for like 25K. Three months prior, it was 50K. They slash it in half. And like everyone on the forums, like, what the hell? Like, you completely just deflated like the value of something so rapidly. Like, yeah. that. you know what I mean? Like, that's what's insane about these things. Yeah. When you're buying tech, you're buying something that it's not going to hold its value. It's devaluing, uh, you know, just day after day. They're constantly, while you're using, that working on the next model they put out the model and people want that next one and they're and going to you- give you the specs to make you sell the old model case in point i had my scarlet and red's like yo we'll buy your scarlet we'll you know we'll give you five grand for it as like a down deposit and we'll give you the the 5k off the new brain and they did the same for the and like it worked for me mind you i was kind of in that cycle I was like oh yeah i mean scarlet doesn't do slow-mo sure yeah you know and i kind right. of leaped for the next big shiny thing and yeah like you i haven't bought a camera since 2018 i mean the yeah. gemini was the thing i bought and this is mind you like right when we were still very much in like i was still dping a lot right. we were in our hustle but since then i mean I have not found one ceiling where my camera was like, oh, I need this next greatest thing. Right. You know what I mean? So, and, and if there's like a particular thing, you know, we need or whatever, oh, we'll then rent it, yeah. you, you rent it. You know what I mean? And yeah, I think some people just get too caught up. And I think YouTube has really, and the, these companies and brands more so have really perpetu. I mean, it's marketing, but they've really perpetuated this, this. And I think that's just the American, like the American culture oh, yeah. is like needing the new, the new keeping up with that. What's it called? Keeping up the Joneses or, uh, oh, I don't or know. something like that. It's like some, that phrase about like always needing to like kind of one up and have that new shiny thing and, and be, um, you know, just, up keeping up to date with everything and and everyone and and you know you have all these companies throwing all this money um at youtubers to talk highly of their product to get people to buy that thing yeah and it's just this vicious cycle of like companies paying people on the internet to say good things about their product to get people to buy it and they just do that over and over and people buy into it and and just always are fawning over you know, these videos. I think it's kind of circling back to what I said. It's kind of, you know, you have someone who wants to get somewhere. Maybe they want to direct videos. They want to be the next, you know, uh, big cinematographer. And they see this thing that's being, they're seeing all the example footage. And a lot of these videos, I have to give kudos to all these, you know, filmmaking YouTubers. They do an excellent job showing you how beautiful the footage looks. And it's no fault to them. I mean, if anything, they've found a niche online where they can 
you know, it works quite well for them. And a lot of people show up for these reviews. Right. The tricky thing is you have a lot of people who like what these filmmakers say is kind of like gospel and getting right. the co-sign from a big filmmaking YouTuber, so to speak. And mind yeah. you, my fiance is a makeup artist and the same thing happens there. Right. You have Jeffree Star, James Charles say that this beauty or blush is the best thing ever and it sells out in seconds. So yeah. this isn't unique to filmmaking. This right. is just consum consumerism, consumerism one-on-one yeah. or capitalism. But I guess given that this is a filmmaking podcast, we are speaking kind of to this thing that happens a lot. And yeah, I mean, it's funny because when we're shooting, we'll have a lot of onset BTS photographers come on and I'll kind of hear the whisperings like, oh, did you get the new A7S? Oh, is that the A7S R3? Yeah. And like, I'm kind of out of touch with a lot of what those cameras are, but it's just kind of funny hearing them like, I think the term's called like pixel peeping where you're like comparing specs like, oh, right. well, does your do does yeah, your do four K one twenty? Oh no, mine is sixty one twenty. Or that doesn't even make sense. Yeah, you know, but like they're all like, and it's like <laughs> it does like, sixty one twenty. Just turn it on, and what does it look like? And right. I've seen so many videos online that are really well done, where it's like literally putting like iPhone footage next to an Alexa, yeah. and like if anything, it's a testament to color grading and your vision because realistically, at the end of the day, most cameras shoot four K. Most look pretty good, and it does not matter if it's from 2018, like our cameras, or if it came out last week. They still look pretty good. I think we did a test at my eclectic West Film Ranch where we like put the when Travis got the Black Magic, yeah. we put the Black Magic side by side with the red, and there was a ton of people in the comments like saying they like the Black Magic one better and couldn't tell a yeah. difference and blah blah blah. And it's like you're comparing like you know a twenty five thirty thousand dollar camera to a, a five six K one. And let's be honest, if you have an amazing script or an amazing composition, I would say nine out of ten people or ten out of ten people are gonna be like, wow, that's an amazing script story or I love that performance versus oh those uh highlights look a little clipped out in this camera. It's like yeah. no if you're if your audience member is looking at clipped out highlights because your camera maybe isn't the highest camera, then I think you have failed as a filmmaker. Steven Soderbergh. Yeah. Shoots movies. Yeah. iPhone. Like literally shoots movies on an yeah, iPhone. I mean, I love how punk rock he is because he's like, dude, I don't care about all this noise. I want to get the camera in places that these cinema cameras can't be. And he's all about his storytelling is getting, you yeah. know, an iPhone in positions that, you know, like a dash cam or whatever. You right. know what I mean? And I think that's awesome because he's using, you know, yeah, I think it speaks to not needing to have. Yeah, I think it, it completely. You have a Hollywood director making Hollywood movies on an iPhone. So there's no excuse as to like, oh, if only I had this camera, I could do what I need to do or yeah. I would land this client or my videos would finally look good. And it's like, no, it comes down to, you know, composition lighting story all of the above and then the camera is just a, a tool and a, and a vessel but like yeah i mean i can't tell you how early on even like the videos i was shooting on like a 5d i think it was that I, I don't know if i was yeah i think i had upgraded to the 5d at this point and there would be comments on youtube be like what red did you shoot this on or was this shot on a red and it's like no it's a 5d yeah. and so it's like it all comes down to how you use that tool and like you know a $2,500 camera, 5D versus a 30, 40,000. I think at the time, reds were more in the 40,000 yeah. price range. So it's like people on the internet couldn't even tell the difference. I'd be an idiot as a 19 year old kid to spend $40,000 yeah. on a camera when I can fool people well, into thinking like why that DSLR revolution. If, I mean, if you were a filmmaker in that era was kind of insane. That's actually exactly the point in time. I decided yeah. I want to be a cinematographer because case in point, the kind of big filmmaking YouTubers at the time, or I think it was Vimeo frick. I mean, it was um like, I th I've mentioned to you like Philip Bloom and Vincent LaFerre were like, like filmmakers who I think Canon probably endorsed or yeah. I don't know the, the deal, but they were showing the 5D, I think the C100 and C200, but like, it was like, I mean, that campaign was insane and yeah. they were shooting short films. There was like, I mean, it was beautiful looking footage and it was, they call it the DSLR revolution because it was kind of like, kind of giving us as a filmmaker a camera that, like you said, can be comparable to film or can be comparable to these huge sensors. And it was like, it changed the game. Yeah. Forever. And like ever since that moment, cameras have gotten cheaper and better. It's like that, that curve, right? Like, um, I don't know, it wouldn't be a lot of diminishing returns, but it's like every year they're getting smaller, more compact, yeah. higher resolution. It's like, and it's like, we're at a point now where like back, like you said, a red was, I think I bought my Scarlet in 2012 for like $20,000. 
and it did 4K. If you wanted to do 60, you had to go down to 2K and like really throttle yeah. the sensor. Now a camera that's like, I think even your vlog camera does higher yeah. slow-mo than my scar. So it's just like, yeah. you know what I mean? It's pretty wild yeah. to think about. But yeah, I mean, I think I think people get caught up in the gear too much. And I'm not saying that I never did because like I said, I, I definitely got caught up in that whole, you know, when I was young filmmaker coming up that whole kind of gear world of oh i need this camera need that and i think like for me when i bought my red it was because it's not because i just wanted the camera because i thought it would make my stuff mm -hmm. look better or this or that it's because i was shooting so much and so frequently that like you know kyle or futuristic would randomly hit me and be like yo let's go shoot a video tomorrow i didn't want to have to like try and call you or schedule a dp and like yeah. and like we just needed to go shoot so i needed one to just literally have in my hands at all times you know uh, at my disposal to just to go shoot and so it wasn't like i didn't buy the red going into like oh i need this camera to to get this job or it'll make my videos better it's like yeah. we were we were already shooting on the red because you owned it but i just needed it at my disposal at all times and so it's like in that moment it worked to buy it and that's when i'd bought yeah. my first red no most of my like big film purchases i mean i guess cameras aside i know that's probably like the baseline of those videos like talking about cameras but i think camera gear in general i mean it's everything from tripods, fall focuses, Teradex, it's all so expensive. And for me, as a Steadicam operator, having some of those tools, we I was like thinking, like like you, I was like, man, we are renting these things all, all the time. time. Every time we want to go do a video, you're like, hey, what are you next week? Let's do this video. I'd be like, oh man, I got to go on ShareGrid. I got to get this Nucleus. I got to get this Teradex. So I was like, I mean, I'm just, just going to get it. it and we'll just right. keep it, keep it in the family, you know? Yeah. But um, so that was that kind of, so certain Things like that, like um, like dictated my decision to purchase gear. Right, but you I didn't buy it because you thought it would make your work better, or you yeah. would land it. You bought it because you saw the the necessity and need within your daily life of just what you were doing. It wasn't a like a, a pipe dream of like, yeah. oh, if I get this, like then this will happen. Well, like, I think we're all a lot of this happen, or what kind of like what I think what we're kind of commenting on. You know, imagine you're going to go buy a car. You would never just go online, look at the specs of a car and buy it, right? Because that would just be ludicrous. Yeah. You're going to go to the dealership, drive in, be like, oh, this ride's kind of nice. Oh, I like the steering wheel. Oh, this leather's kind of nice. But for filmmakers and cameras, yeah. you can't just like go test out a camera. So like the way we, I think as filmmakers, like test out the camera is by like looking at filmmakers we trust, seeing their review, seeing their test footage and like vicariously yeah. through their video, we're like, yeah. you know, and we're kind of instilling a lot of trust in them. Not to say that they're being dishonest, but I mean, we're seeing footage all eloquently shot. We're seeing the best features of these cameras. So in a weird way, we're getting like the perfect test drive and yeah. we're like, okay, cool, done. And, and I, yeah. I think that's case in point because I mean, I've gone through that as, you know, a YouTuber and someone who has influence and has followers. I've had companies reach out to me and because you and, had sent several products, right? Like the the Ronin. Yeah, I think. the Ronin. I've done I've done, you know, a, a drone thing, a Ronin thing. I've done a numerous things, but like you're being paid to talk positively about this yeah, they're product. They're not going to send it to you like, yeah, we want to hear all the flaw, you know, the flaw. No, uh, they wouldn't pay you. Yeah. And so you're it's just everything that's being put out there about these products when it's these like gear reviews like that um it's just it's all nothing but the the positive aspects of it and nothing to like really dive into the cons i mean yes people touch on the cons but like at the end of the day i've had companies like hey you can't you can't say that and it's just yeah like, what or like, like i think even stuff to the point where like Oh, we gave you a beta model. We fixed that issue. So just yeah, no, that cut that out. happened. Yeah, I had yeah. a lot of issues initially um, with you know. So I don't want to like name drop too much, but some some gear and it was yeah. It's like oh, it's beta model. It's fixed now. Blah blah blah. Like all all the time. But yeah, I and there was I made one video um, which it it was like uh, Travis was actually like demoing it and how to use it and this mm -hmm. and that. And I wanted to publish it, and they're like, hey, you can't publish that because it's like kind of incorrect and like shows it wow. not the way we would use it and i they wouldn't let me publish the video because it yeah so it's oh, like because yeah, you had like a, a balancing tutorial yeah and like, yeah. i guess it was not to their standard yeah or so i couldn't put it so out case of point that like everything we're seeing is like heavily curated by these big manufacturers yes. who are you know obviously sponsoring a lot of these creators so us as the 
potential consumer of this product are only seeing the greatest, best things. Yeah. I think case in point is the R5. I don't think anyone knew it overheated until they got it. They saw the beautiful footage. Yeah, and yeah, and yeah. then case in point, all everyone started getting their their models because they, you know, oh, 8K and like I mean, overheat, overheat, yeah, overheat. And it's like kind of wild. So like not to say that camera was a lemon because I think you can get away with shooting 4K and it looks great. But like that was, I think people saw the footage. They saw the specs. They saw, they the, saw 8K. They're like, like yeah. all right, say less. Swipe <laughs> our, our, our good friend, you know? And I don't know if he's mentioned about the overheating, but I know that was like a pretty big issue. Yeah. You know what I mean? So yeah. Um, I don't know if his R5 is... I think he's no, he still uses it. Yeah, yeah. yeah. No, yeah. I mean, I it looks it's a clean. great camera for we photo used it, and everything. But yeah. BTS on the the Asus project, it, it looks good. It looks really good. But yeah, I guess I I just I would I don't want this to all sound like super negative. Anyone listening, watching, I do want this to be like inspiring, and I I do feel like anyone listening might kind of be in like a little bit of a situation like, oh man, like I'm that person. Like what what do I do? Do I buy that red or what is like they want to obviously like as I mentioned get to where they want to go. Like what? I what would you say? What? Did, how would you navigate? Well, the situation, I I think you know? in, if it's something that you really need and it's not like a, a hope or a dream, like I don't, I feel like you should never buy something and go like, oh well, I hope this will land me that job or no, opportunity. I get this all the time. Oh, I want to get a red because my clients want a red. I'll be honest, most commercial jobs they do not give a flying f what camera. They don't even know what camera we're on. Like that is like to say, oh, I want to get a red because my clients want that. It's like that is. I, and, and if that's know. the case, hi, rent rent it. Hire hire a DP, or if you're the DP, literally find a friend who has one and rent his camera. Don't drop forty fifty G's. Oh yeah, and put a, yourself in like a really crazy financial burden. Yeah, and like, yeah. I mean, yeah. There, it's just I know because yeah. like it, that like it goes back to like I would never want to take like I'm all about owning stuff outright not having payments on things outside of like you know I, luckily I, I've gotten to that point in my life where I can do that but like I I could not in good conscience tell someone to go spend forty fifty thousand dollars on a camera to maybe a couple of times a month have a job where they're using it yeah like if you're unless you're just working non-stop yeah, then already it would make total sense, would make total sense. It's like you're gonna rent it 15 days out of that month no just go buy it you know what i mean right exactly so and then i mean so for you but like you know going to how we met how our relationship started and grew happened because yes we got along and that video happened where we mm -hmm. met but you had a red camera and I was like, I wanted all my videos from that point on after we shot on your yeah, red. So it is a double edged sword red. because having obviously a shiny new toy will obviously it'll look great. It will do the things that I think it often says it will, but it's just a matter, does it make sense for you? If yeah. you're a small videographer in a small city, kind of like you were doing videos for 500 bucks for artists yeah. at that moment in time, if a time traveler, Jay came by and says, Hey, do you want to buy this $50,000 camera? You're like, dude, are you insane? Yeah. But like, we've obviously YouTube has evolved and now there's so much stuff kind of, kind of trying to sell you this stuff. And I think people yeah. are like filmmakers are trying to navigate like, well, like, do I need it? And they see, you know, the success of different people thinking that's, that's the key. That's the missing ingredient. And I think that is kind of misleading because realistically, like, I think cameras are the biggest culprit. Sure. Yeah. I mean, it's just, if you have, I guess my, my word of advice is if you're going to make a big purchase like that, treat it like a big purchase, like you would with a car, right? You're not just going to like walk into a dealer one day and buy a car. Yeah. Like I would say, A, two things, either rent it on like borrow lenses, share grid, and literally use it, like use it for a week. And yeah, you might take the L on the rental but at least you can try it out. You can see if it you know affects your work in a, the way you right. expected. Because and then the other thing is, before making a big purchase, like literally, no matter how excited you are, just like take a week, take two weeks, and really just think on it. Because sometimes I think people like just impulse buy stuff. And then case in point with you with the C two hundred, and it's like you start to realize like ah, this is not it. You yeah. Know? So it's like I just well, dude, I've seen it even on like the face some Facebook groups. And stuff, people already selling their V Raptors. Wow. Like, and I'm just like, I've seen it multiple times on Facebook, like some yeah. groups, like, hey, selling my V Raptor package. Da, da, da. I'm like, have they already Dude, been what? shipping it or are they like selling their pre order? No, no, no. They already have them and oh. like shot a project on it, didn't really like it or this or that. And they're selling it now. So wow. it's like, it's, it's just crazy that someone 
dropped whatever it was, dropped a bag yeah. on buying this new camera. And they probably took an L because they can't sell it at full no, price. No, you, you know? can't sell that at full price. And so it's just like, it, that's crazy to me. Um, but anyway, Yeah, I guess so. kind of getting back to your initial post, and I, I would agree 100%, like, obviously focusing on the things you have control of. Yeah. Because you don't have control of how expensive cameras are or what you have access to, but what you do have control of is your sense of lighting, your framing, your composition, like those are all things that are technically free. You can with an iPhone make those decisions. So right. like focus on the things you have complete control over and not like give yourself all these unnecessary like hurdles like, oh, well, I'm not going to film that until I get this. It's like, just, I almost just challenge it. Just go out and shoot. Yeah. If that's a T2i, an iPhone or a Red, like whatever you have, just make well, yeah, that I was and making own your craft. I was making awesome stuff back in the day with my even mini DV camera before yeah. the, the T2i and then the T2i. But yeah, I'm on the comment section right now. And like, I mean, a lot of people are agreeing. There's like creativity is key, 100, 100, well, you know what real say, talk. Bro? Because I think people maybe look at sort of where we're at and some of the... What are you laughing at? <laughs> that person said, I don't chase gear, just pixels. So going back to your yeah. pixel peeping. So yeah. they just look for the pixels, I guess. But anyway, sorry. Go go ahead. So what I think some people look at like what you and I have done and are doing. And yes, we have these tools, right? We both own Reds and we use them a lot in our projects. So I understand that someone might be like, oh, well, you guys obviously have that gear and you guys are doing really well. I'm going to get that gear. Right. You know what I mean? And what I will say is the gear, I don't think, I mean, yes, we met when I had a Scarlet that obviously helped, you know, when we were on our, on our right. up and coming rise. But beyond the gear, I think the thing that will really, really make a big difference is it sounds corny, but the phrase 10,000 hours. Yeah. Literally, there's a, fr if you do something for 10,000 hours, no matter what it is, woodworking, filmmaking, anything you will be an expert. Just by doing something for long enough, you will naturally become a pro where it is just muscle memory. And I think the, the camera doesn't really, that is a tool, right? Like if you were to give Mozart or a famous composer the nicest piano in the world or a piano at a thrift store, he's I'm sure crush. he's still gonna make a banging symphony. You <laughs> oh, know what yeah. I mean? Like, and that's the same with cameras. Like if you are just a master at your craft, like literally it doesn't matter. a red that shoots 8K versus 6K doesn't matter. is not going to matter. Look at, I mean, even like my helium shoots 8K, yours shoots 5K. Who who cares? Yeah. Like, so I guess I'm just trying to really hammer down on the fact that, yeah, obviously we're seeing these beautiful tech videos and we're like kind of being told why we need certain things. And, you know, maybe that speaks to you, but like really trying to get back to the core of like what filmmaking is. It's just like honing your craft Telling and a story. don't get lost in the sauce of all the, the pixels and the specs. And I, I really think if you have a camera and it works, I challenge you just to like, just practice, practice, practice. Yeah. Know? So I, I truly believe gear doesn't matter to an extent. Obviously you can't film a video on a potato. Yeah. <laughs> you need a camera. Yeah. But I truly believe gear doesn't matter and it's all about, you know, everything else. You know what I mean? And so I, I don't know what you guys think. Let us know in the comments below. Does gear matter? What's your thoughts on this? I'd also love but, to hear your guys' biggest gear regrets. Well, so I was literally just going to ask you let, to wrap this up. Yeah. Worst, biggest gear purchase Ooh. regret that you've ever had. I, I mean, you already know mine. So hmm. what do you, what do you have? The one piece of gear. Oh, wow. That you're like, dude, what, what was I thinking? Why on earth did I buy this piece of gear? You got to have something. Hmm. I actually really try to do a lot of research before making a big swipe. Damn, I don't have nothing. Uh, you got to have something. I bought a drone. <laughs> <laughs> I bought a drone recently. I bought a drone. Not even dude. like I bought the mini one. I was yeah. like, we were going on a lot of trips. I was like, dude, I want to be that guy who can like throw this out of my think <laughs> tank and get a cool little. And I think I've used it twice. Dude, you got some nice little overhead pictures of the studio. Yeah, I, that was also like my school thought. But yeah. mind you, it was like four ninety nine. So I'm like, all right, like I'll just treat it like a bad day. Like 
gambling or something like <laughs> I, I, i've used it but yeah i i, I regret buying that but it, it kind of the pictures for the studio there it was almost yeah. worth that purchase Justified alone to it. get those shots yeah and like, i guess the second one would be the, the gopro i've I haven't used that in a while <laughs> <laughs> i'm trying to think outside i mean of, your your yours is like definitely like a, oh, yeah. a huge swipe yeah um yeah that one was bad yeah and i i completely regret that one outside of that i really don't buy gear man i you I'm, don't actually yeah i'm i think i buy more gear than you and i more. honestly yeah. definitely pump the brakes i mean once i feel like i had my core kit i i'm not like constantly trying to like over finesse my kit like i yeah there's better fall focuses there's better tear decks i'd have like a, a baseline I just, kit. You know? i would just rather spend my money on stuff that's gonna add like value to my life and and grow in value and invest in you know a new yeah. business or venture or things rather than like buying a new monitor that in a year they're going to come out with the next one with more nits and brightness and blah 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 like i would Anything just you look at there's going to be a, a new brighter version of yeah. or a so better I'm like, version i'm surprised know? i even bought the komodo but that was because we we always needed another little camera for little things bts primarily was we we're going to use it for like second like little you know camera stuff so we didn't have to like take off steady cam and everything to get this one little quick shot and yeah, like yeah. there was like a need behind you know, it for a bunch of different it wasn't things just like you saw the promo video or spec no like, swipe dude and i was sat there forever going like i don't need this camera yeah uh, I, I, we could use it in this no, we way we use this it way, on every way. i mean literally we, this is the komodo right komodo, here yeah so, and so yeah uh, i don't regret that one at all komodo is one of my favorite pieces of gear tech camera that that's a I've dope camera. ever bought yeah. ever bought hands down but yeah outside of that one camera that was a big big l and i regret chasing it outside of that what i've never bought a drone best? what oh uh, yeah I've what would you say is like the the piece of gear like you know what I would buy that ten like over and over. My computer, yeah, just a powerful upgraded computer. I can yeah, slice no, through. Yeah, big big upgrade in Mac. I mean, I just got the Mac Pro and like best decision of my life. Yeah, yeah I was like twenty plus K, but like, yeah. I mean, I, yeah, it, it's a beast. And like, yeah. I mean, literally when I'm not Steadicam operating, people ask like, oh, what do you do on your down days? Because yeah, I mean, I'll work like three or four days out of the week, but yeah. like there's days where I'm off, and. Well, that's what the crazy thing about us. Sorry, keep going. I don't want to. No, I was just saying, me. like when I'm not operating, because people might be watching, like, oh, like Tom's a steady cam operator. Like, literally, most of my week is doing stuff for Tropic Color. That's what I was gonna say. Like promo videos, new products. Like literally, this product we just launched. I mean, that camera, my, that computer chews through all those high yeah. resolution photos. I couldn't even imagine like doing that on like a consumer. Absolutely not. Yeah. And that's why same thing, like with all the stuff outside of when, yeah, I'm not directing, doing things like all the stuff that I do for Tropic and Prism and editing all the things and, and just yeah, whatnot. You need a point, machine. They came out with a new M1 Mac and everyone's doing the reviews. And like, yeah, if part of me is like, damn, that's kind of cool. But like, I look at my machine, I'm like, I'm good. Like yeah, I, yeah. I intentionally... I, Spec'd it out fully so like i wouldn't have this phone well, same thing like i had this laptop i just got it a couple months ago and they came out the m1 i was like gosh dang it man but and honestly I was like, are you really gonna be editing a promo video you're likely checking no, emails and uploading and that's stuff why like i had to check myself and be like i don't need it yeah all i do with this laptop is when i travel i check emails edit some photo no, a couple but you photos had, it's like hard it. not to watch like marquez like review Brown, that yeah. one i'm like oh my god this is sick but yeah. i'm like yeah i have to be like no nah, like I'm, I'm yeah good. but like i would yeah again like i said i would rather take all that money and you know start saving it to you know invest in a new property or to you know go yeah an put asset it, that's not going to diminish exactly yeah. put it you know because i mean i can't if i were to try and sell this right now i can't get anything close to what i bought it for and it's only a couple months old so yeah. it's just like you know i i would much rather put my money into assets and things that are going to increase in value and then diminish and like be op obsolete in a year two 100%. three years whatever it is so so let us know down below your biggest i'd actually love to know your biggest two L. number one period so you go one period your biggest regret purchase, two period, just down below, the purchase you would do over and over, over, 10 out of 10 times. So I like that. Yeah. I like I'd that. love to hear your answers. I'm sure we'll see quite a few GoPros, <laughs> quite a few drones. I don't know. Maybe a couple of cameras too. I, I would think a couple of cameras. I, I've I feel actually like heard a lot of filmmakers have like regrets magic. about lights. Yes. I actually lights. watched a video. There's a filmmaker, Jesse Driftwood. I think his channel's dope. And he made a whole video about like buying this like $6,000 light during quarantine because he thought it would change his whole studio. And he's like, dude, this thing was a piece of junk. Really? And it's like, 
I think P I think I will probably see some lighting down below because it's, it's like, like that's true. Yeah, that's probably because you like see oh this is gonna change my the skin tone and then it's like a junk China yeah. light or something. But anyways, cool. I think that kind of wraps us yeah. out on this. Like one. like comment subscribe let us know like what Tom said with those. Um, take it away on the podcast portion. Yeah. Um, Same thing. If you get a chance on Apple Pod, Spotify, you'll have a chance to go down. You'll be able to like leave a star rating, leave a review. All that helps us. So make sure to go watch some of the other episodes if you haven't seen those yet yeah and uh yeah also leave comments below for any topics that you guys want to see us talk about and cover we read the comments and look for interesting comments about you know cool topics that we could potentially 100%. cover in future videos episodes all that stuff so yeah that's today's quick take good talk sheesh you already know <laughs> <laughs>